Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to talk to you about good knives, bad knives, what makes a good knife, and what I think will serve you well in the field as far as a one tool option, and what would last a lifetime to pass down to your kids, and what maybe wouldn't, and what I think you could trust your life with. You know, that's a big topic. Is the one tool option, is the one tool option a good idea? Um, and I'm going to try to go over that with you a little bit today and talk about it. The idea behind the one tool option, and what people don't want to seem to understand, and I'm not trying to call people out or nothing, but a lot of people don't understand what the one tool option is about. People think it's some guys trying to go gung-ho out there with a machete or a, a quarter-inch thick Becker BK2 and survive off nothing but that. That's not the idea behind the one tool option. Anybody that thinks that does not understand the concept. The concept is it's the thing that's attached to your hip. It doesn't mean you don't bring an axe and a little knife out there. I always bring, when I go out in the field, an axe, a little knife, and normally a saw. It's not about that. It's about but the one knife that's strapped to your hip at all times. If you fall out of a canoe, if something happened, if you, if you fall on a, through ice into a river, you know, if something screwed up happens, you drop the hag off the side of a mountain, something, and this is all you have on your hip, can it perform the task that you need done? I don't care what anybody says, a four inch, a, a four, three and a half, four inch, eighth inch thick knife, if you stick that thing in something and start to pry on it, there's a chance it could snap off. If you're trying to baton through a four inch log, obviously a three and a half or four inch blade really ain't going to get it. A four inch blade is not going to baton through a four inch log correctly because you're not going to have enough tips sticking out the end to hit it. I'm not saying you should even use these knives. You should know how to. You should train with them. But once you learn how, strap it to your hip and use the stuff that's easier for the task. You don't have to go out there and carve with a five-inch knife. You know, I'm just trying. But people think that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to take one knife and do everything with it. But you don't have to do that every time. But you should be able to if you have to. It should be able to baton. It should be able to chop. It should be able to skin game. It should be able to carve if it has to. It should be able to it should be able to do anything you need that knife to do if it has to be done. If it has to be. Not because it wants to be every single time. And there are so many people out there that think that and they get on here and they completely slap the one tool option. And people people will go out there with a mora and and a, a mora and axe and a saw. That's great. Go out there with a mora and axe and a saw, and you will be perfectly fine if nothing happens. But if something happens and that moor is around your neck and you fall in the water and you lose your axe and your saw, you know, you're in, you're in trouble. Unless, you know, I, I know I know Cody Lundeen carried a moor number, classic number two, mainly through the whole thing of dual survival. That's great. Moors are very durable knives. I've got one on the table here. I love them. But if you need that knife to pry something, or if you need that knife to really do some heavy batoning, it's not going to get it for you. It's a four-inch blade. It's pretty little. If you're sticking that thing in a log and you're going down it and you run out of tip, or if you smack it wrong, it's going to break. Are they hard to break? For what they are, they are durable as anything. But they are you can break them. So let's talk about what I believe a knife needs to be. First of all, I'm going to show you my number one carry. It's this one right here. It's the Pathfinder Scout. That's why it got a. Uh, that's why I rate this one a ten out of ten at anything. It's five thirty seconds thick. That's plenty much. A three sixteenths is a good thickness too, but five thirty seconds will do it. One eighth is a little thin for me. If you're gonna be really beating on it, but five thirty seconds will do it, especially if you have a good steel like this O one tool steel. O one's a good all around steel. It holds a good edge. It takes a good edge, and I, and I prefer it over any other steel. Just about. So, what I believe, you know, what I believe, I believe you should have a good high carbon steel blade. It shouldn't be coated. It should have a hard 90 degree spine on the back. It should be able to throw sparks with a rock that's harder than seven. Rock, uh, um, flint, chert, quartz, facidian will do it. All this stuff, all that stuff should be met. It should have fully full tang with the handles bolted to it. As you can see, most of these are. Again, you, you can carry an Allen screw with you and tighten these up, but they don't get loose very much. That's just a critic. But these the SE5 is a great knife. They don't have, but they, they do have removable scales. 
But if you tighten those things down hard, those micro scales aren't going to move very much. It, you'd have to really do some stuff to them to make them move. So the SC5, if I had to pick one, is the only exception. The BK2 scales, they suck. Replace them with micarta if you get them. Replace them. The, the, those plastic black handles, they suck. They absolutely are terrible. So, um, okay. Let's just jump right into what, what I think about these knives. The Pathfinder 1. A lot of hype about this knife. Very popular knife. 3 sixteenths, great thickness. 01 tool steel, great steel. Scandinavian grind. I went over this knife in another video. You can watch that. A, with, a long comparison with the Pathfinder Scout. But overall, it's a good knife. It'll serve you well. There's some things I don't like about it. But again, I'm not trying to get into that right at the moment. I'm just trying to show you knives that carry. If you want a good knife that'll serve you well, the Pathfinder one will do it. The Pathfinder Scout is phenomenal. If you want, if I could recommend one knife to anybody, it will be the Pathfinder Scout. There are other knives out there that will serve the same purposes. Again, the Pathfinder one will do everything it needs to do. I'm not knocking it. I just don't think it'll do it as well as a Scout. The Pathfinder Butcher Knife, eighth inch thick. It's a little bit thin. But it'll still do everything you need it to do, and it's a good knife. But you just can't pry on it too much. If you want to stick it in a stump and pry on it, you may get a funky result. You may get a funky result, okay? The SE5 is bomb-proof. Absolutely 100% bomb-proof. It's quarter-inch thick, just like the Becker. You can stick this thing in a car door and pry it open, and it, will probably, and, it, and it would break the car door before it break the knife. Probably. I mean, it's a huge... It's a, it's a pry bar is what it is. Again, good micarta scales. The scales rarely loosen, but I'm still not a fan of scales like that. It does come with a coating. I don't like the coating because you can't strike a ferro rod with it. You can't hit it with a rock. Now you can now you can't now you can hit it with a rock. I took the coating off. And you could strike it with a ferro rod because I sharpened the spine right here. I epoxied the scales on. I took them off, put it all over the back of the scales, and I epoxied it on there. Those scales are not going anywhere now. I love using that knife. The only downside to it now is it is a quarter inch thick and it is incredibly heavy. It's a pound knife. It's a very heavy knife. The Woodsman Pro is my is a great knife to carry. I love carrying the Woodsman Pro. It carves great. It's a good knife. As you can see, it doesn't get a lot of heavy use. It's still shiny. It normally gets carving use and stuff like that. But again, back to the one tool option. If I'm going out, I carry this. I normally carry a smaller knife, whether it be the Woodsman Pro or the Moore. I beat the crap out of the Moore because, again, I don't really care if I break it. The Woodsman Pro, though, I'll normally have because that is my favorite knife to use for carving. I don't go out there and try to whittle spoons with the Pathfinder Scout. That's not what it's for. But it could it whittle a spoon if it had to? Absolutely. It could. Would it be the best spoon? No, but it could do it. you got to sacrifice a little bit. But I don't... I, that's what people don't understand. I don't just run out. People don't just run out there with one knife and think they can do everything with it, and that's all they bring when they go camping. That's not what it's about. It's about having one knife in case you need it to do everything. Again, the more classic number two. You can't go wrong with it. Take it every day, all day, for what it is, and it'll. I'd bring four of them out in the field with me, if I, you know, if if I wanted to, and trust them because they're good knives. Again, when I trust it to be my only knife, never in a million years. But again, I don't have to because I've got the good one on my belt. So basically, guys, I'm just going to run over it one more time. If you have a sharp 90 degree spine and you have a, a high carbon steel blade, yes, you have to take care of them. You know, people coat blades because they don't want you to have to oil your blades. They're worried about corrosion resistance. And I can understand that if you're a military guy and you're out in the middle of the woods... I mean, in the middle of the jungles, and just raining all the time. I can get that, but if you're a, if you're a guy who can carry stuff with him, and 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 I've had guys throw it back up in my face, say, "Well, you say that it should be able to do everything. What if you lose everything and you can't have oil?" That's a good point. What I'm saying is, by the time that knife rusts through, or rusts to the point where you can't use it, or something like that happens. You should not be in that situation any longer. Okay, it, for a knife that's 3 sixteenths or 5 30 seconds thick, or a quarter inch thick especially, to rust to the point where you can't use it, especially if you just keep it dry, 
But what I'm saying, if you, if you keep it dry, and unless you're in a rainforest, you can keep it dry some way or another. Uh, you, you, can, you can find a way to keep it dry-ish, unless you're using it. Wipe it off when you're done on your pants. If it's, it, it, sh it shouldn't be raining all the time. Dry it next to your fire. You should always have a ferro rod strapped to your sheet. That's why I should always be able to strike sparks off the back of that knife, have a hard 90-degree angle. So, you know, that's not a valid argument. If, if you're in that situation long enough for that knife to rust through, you're, you're out there on purpose, or you're dead. Or you're living on a desert island by yourself for, for weeks and weeks or months and years, okay? That shouldn't happen. That should not happen. If that happens, you've got bigger problems, okay? But, again, I can understand that. If that's the only argument there is, though, I'll take my chances on not having a well for what the carbon steel will do for me. You've got you to pick, pick and choose your battles on that one. But, again, carbon steel, strike sparks off a of rock harder than seven, flint, chert, quartz, pisidian. All those will work. Be able to strike a ferro rod, you know, and it needs to be full tang with the handles bolted to it. That's the only thing wrong with the mower. But, you know, again, the mower is a $15 knife. If it'll do those things, guys, past that, what you need is a knife that feels good in your hands. You got to make the knife yours. I love the Pathfinder Scout. I would not take any knife over it. I've held every, I've held a lot of knives. I don't have them all on the table, obviously. But I've held diving sparrows, and I've held, I've held um, Andy Roy stuff, and I've held all these knives. They're all great knives. Andy Roy has some of the best feeling handles. Andy Roy from Fiddleback Forge has some of the best feeling handles you'll ever put in your hand, in my opinion. But I just, I, I'm drawn to the Pathfinder Scout, and that's the knife I like. You know, it's just about what you like. The Pathfinder Scout isn't as comfortable as some knives, but it's still a very comfortable knife. As long as the knife feels good in my hand and it doesn't have hot spots, it's a good knife in my opinion if it meets all the other criteria that I give it. It's what it's about, guys. Finding a knife that cuts good, made by a quality company. I always recommend you buy custom knives as far as, the, but I know not everybody can get custom knives. If you're not going to go custom, go with an Essie. If you're not going to go with an Essie, go with a Becker and buy the Micarta Scales. You know, if you have to go with a mower and it's the only thing that you can get, I recommend that you go with a what that you go with a more um clipper is good. Um a more a more um companion MG. If you want to spend an extra fifty if you want to go to fifty bucks, a more um bush crab black is probably the best mower out there as far as durability. It's an eighth inch thick, throws sparks crazy off a of flint and a ferro rod. It meets all the criteria other than the full tang one. It's a great knife. Um, so just find a knife for you. Stick with it. Work with it. If it ain't the one for you, um, that's my dog, Wolfie. <laughs> if it ain't the one for you, try something different. It's all trial and error with knives. It I, I, I love all these knives on the table. I wouldn't trade them. But, again, the Pathfinder Scout is the one for me, and it, I, I have not found anything better that I like more to this point. All right, guys. Thanks for thanks for watching. I know it may have been a kind of a just me talking a lot, but I wanted to give you my thoughts and my um, view on things. Um, go out there, enjoy everything you do. If you're not enjoying it, then you shouldn't be doing it, guys. You know, enjoy what you do. Enjoy going out there and spending time in the woods. Enjoy your equipment. Find the equipment you enjoy and buy stuff you can that'll last a lifetime. You know. I went to Dave Canterbury's school and for the basic class, and he said the best thing I think I've ever heard. Buy it once, cry once. Buy once, cry once. Spend the money one time and be done with it. So, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. I hope to be back real soon. Have a good day.